Check the description for the following discount codes. Before we get into this video, I just want to say in case my left eye looks a little red or, or unusual, I don't know if it will show up on camera, I had a drill bit snap whilst I was drilling a hole yesterday and hit me straight in the eye. So I spent the whole day um, in and out of various rooms at hospital having it looked at. Anyway, in case it looks a little red or a little odd in the video, that's what happened. Anyway, these pedals, the Acer Tech Invicta pedals, their first release into the sim racing pedal market. This is my full review. Now, gonna get it out of the way right at the beginning here. These are definitely the nicest pedals I have ever used, hands down. Everything from the build quality, to the way they feel, to their functionality, adjustability, and the effort that's gone into the research and development to try and get these to feel as close to real life race pedals that you'll find in race cars as they possibly can. And they've definitely achieved that. But this does come with some drawbacks and we'll get to that in a minute. The only thing they've added in that isn't realistic is this nice uh, RGB stripe along the bottom here that you can see lit up on camera there. Uh, but you know, everyone loves RGB and these are sim racing pedals and not pedals that you're gonna put in your real car. Now, if you saw my unboxing and first impressions, you'll already know what a lot of the features and that of these pedals are, but I'll go through them briefly again, um, just to make sure everyone knows and we're all on the same page. Everything you see here that is in this sort of, in fact, I'm just gonna unplug the USB, so. You haven't got a distracting light. Everything you see here that's in this sort of burnt orange color are all your adjustments. They're, they're done you know, in this sort of two-tone effect, which not only looks really good, it shows you quite quickly and easily where you can adjust pedal travel, preload, and end stops. Um, so let's just very briefly talk about how they all work. The ones you see at the front here are what adjust the angle of the pedals. Now, these pedals are intended to be used at 90 degrees. They have added a little bit of adjustment, but it doesn't go back that far. I mean, I've got mine ever so slightly back with the brake pedal sort of slightly further forward. And again, this is an intentional um, setup, it's supposed to be like that. Uh, Acer Tech say, you know, in a real race car, the brake pedal is always slightly forward so that when things start going wrong, it's the easiest pedal to find with your foot in sort of an emergency scenario. So I left it ever so slightly forward, um, but I have moved them all back just a touch because for me, the 90 degree was just a little bit too upright, albeit authentic. So yeah, these adjusters here are how you would adjust those. You literally, there's a locking collar for each one. You undo the locking collar and you push your pedal where you, and then you simply just twist them in or out and then the pedal will stay, you know, wherever you've left it according to that adjuster there. And you just lock the sort of collar around the middle here back off again. And it's the same for all three pedals. The only difference when you do that to the brake pedal, let's get this USB cable out of the way. With the brake pedal, you need to undo, hopefully you'll see it, this collar, let's just flip that up on its side. You need to undo this locking collar here first, take this little clip off and push the clevis pin out and disconnect this. Because should you wanna move this pedal a reasonable distance, you need to wind this shaft in, yeah, you can see that, this shaft here into the cylinder, uh, or if you were going out the other way, out of the cylinder. So that's slightly, you know, sort of different to the other two pedals where you simply adjust it using these on the front here. So there's, with the brake pedal, there's that, and then there's the bit at the back as well. Not complicated, easy enough to do, but just an extra step on the brake pedal there. The faces can be adjusted up, down, left, and right. As you can see, it's just got holes drilled in them, you know, nice and easy to do, like we've seen on a lot of other pedals. You can also adjust um, the angle and the throw of the pedals by removing these clevis pins and putting them in the lower holes that we have on each pedal. You can see them there, the same one on the accelerator. So you can adjust them there as well if you want, a bit more adjustment. Uh, we've then got at the back of the pedals, we have the end stop adjustment, which is here. So that would be your 
travel, your final travel, as far as a pedal can go. What we have here is like an Allen bolt and then a locking collar. Again, you crack off the locking collar, you wind your Allen bolt up or down, you can do it with your fingers, and then you just do your locking collar up. And that will determine how far, this is a clutch pedal in this case, which is heavy, how far that actually goes um, you know, before it reaches its stop. Uh, you don't have one of those for the brake, that is all taken care of inside the hydraulic cylinder assembly, but you do have one for the accelerator pedal. So that is how you would adjust those two. Now, talking about the accelerator pedal, we have preload adjustment here, which you can wind in or out to make the pedal feel lighter or heavier. There is also a lighter spring whoop, that it comes with that you can put in should you wish. For me, um, the weight of this as it comes at the box is just fine, and I like that. All three of these pedals are very smooth in operation. You know, there's no grinding or catching or snagging, and there's no unnecessary play, you know, side to side or, or anything like that either. All very well made to tolerances and, and really nicely engineered. So yes, that's your preload adjustment, and you can change the spring if you want. End stop, angle adjustment. Very simple. Um, the throttle pedal, you know, this is the easiest pedal to simulate in any set of pedals really, because in real life cars, they simply have a form of position sensor, whether it's Hall effect or potentiometer, measuring how far the pedal has moved. It relays that information back to the ECU. The ECU would then adjust your throttle butterfly on your throttle body electronically, or if it's an old school car, there'd be a physical cable attached to your pedal, which runs through your bulkhead into the engine bay and mechanically moves that throttle butterfly. So, you know, not a whole lot technology-wise to chat about when it comes to the accelerator pedal, very simple, but it's very smooth, it's effective, and it's got all the adjustment that we need. I briefly mentioned the pedal faces. These ones are very rough, and that is intentional. These are designed to be used with shoes of some sort. They will be offering a softer set of faces for those of us that may race in socks. Now you'll see some footage of me um, in a little while using these pedal faces with socks. It's not too bad, but ultimately I think it just wear through your socks after a while, so probably not recommended. Um, let's have a look at the clutch pedal now. We're gonna to get to the brake pedal last because that's the most interesting one for most of us. They've done a brilliant job here of simulating a biting point, simulating clutch springs on a pressure plate in a real life clutch. And I absolutely love that because I'm an H pattern shifter when it comes to dirt rally. Um, and to have the ability to set a physical biting point that I feel with my foot to match my in-game clutch saturation so that when I feel those simulated clutch springs just starting to re-engage as I lift my foot up, in the sim, the virtual clutch is just starting to bite and the car is just starting to creep forward. That allows me to whip my foot up quickly at the start of a stage, get it to that biting point, and then when the lights go green, bang, I can lift my foot off and the clutch is already engaged and we don't waste any time with traveling from clutch fully down up to that biting point and then all the way up. That is, see a lot of, I see a lot of reviews about clutch pedals and every single person says that this simulated biting point is really of no use and you don't feel it when you're racing and all this sort of thing. But I think they're missing the point. It's not what it's for. It's for when you're launching off the line, you can set that physical bite point to match your physical bite point in the game and save you precious time as you launch off the line. Now, I'm not that quick a racer, so to me, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. But those of you out there that are serious, serious sim racers and are super fast, saving a few temps by not having to, when you are H pattern shifting and using a clutch, by not having to come from all the way from the floor as you, as you pull away, <clears throat> and having that biting point physically felt by your foot can make all the difference. Now in some sims you will see the car ever so slightly start to move on screen as well, that's another way of doing it, but having a physical feeling underfoot is much better, especially if you are used to that in real life. For me, I fitted race clutches to track cars for over 10 years now, and they feel heavy, this, this, they've done a great job here at Acer Tech of replicating the feeling. Pedal's super heavy for a, a clutch, and if you've ever used a, like a, a proper heavy duty race clutch, 
as you overcome those springs, it is super noticeable. And when you're bringing your foot back up, it almost wants to launch your foot back off the pedal. They're so strong. And they're strong because they're designed to take the torque from a race engine or a, you know, a fast sort of streetcar engine tuned up to go on track. The more torque you produce, the, the more torque that clutch has to hold um, when those pressure plates squeeze on your friction plate against your flywheel, otherwise you'll get clutch slip. So they've done a brilliant job here with this clutch and it's, it's, probably, my, it's probably my favorite pedal out of the set. You know, accelerator pedal's smooth and nice, it doesn't have to really do a lot. Um, you know, and you've got all the adjustments there you need. Clutch pedal, for me, this is just beautiful and feels super realistic, so I really like that. Again, you've got the same adjustments uh, as you have for the accelerator pedal. You've got your preload, your end stop, and your angle adjustment there as well. So, great, great, overall, love the pedals. Now, the brake pedal. This is where it's gonna make or break who these pedals are for. This brake pedal is a Marmite pedal. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. Acer Tech have set out, as I mentioned earlier, to replicate as near as they can real life race car pedals. Now in a race car, you do not have servo assisted brakes or Americans, I think you call them brake boosters. You don't have that in race cars. Um, there's no assistance whatsoever. It's, Servo assistance is vacuum operated in a car if you're, not, if you're not familiar with how it works. And what it does is there's a big brake servo or booster that your master cylinder is attached to. And as the engine creates vacuum, it creates a vacuum inside the master, inside the servo, sorry, which assists you when you press the pedal. And you press the pedal down and because there's a vacuum, it helps pull that master cylinder uh, as you apply pressure on the pedal, which in turn moves your brake fluid through your lines to your brake calipers and you know affects your braking. Race cars don't have that. You simply press your foot on the pedal. There's then some mechanical play, shall we say, in the, in the pedal that you feel before any braking comes into effect. Now that mechanical play would be where you have to have movement, where the pedals are hinged. For example, if, if a pedal is able to move, there has to be some mechanical clearance there, otherwise it wouldn't move. So there'll be play where the pedal pivots at its base, there'll be play where the clevis pin engages with the back of the pedal from the brake master cylinder on a set of race pedals. This is where the master cylinder is directly on the back of the pedal and doesn't go through a servo. There'll be some play there. There'll then be, some, you may get a tiny bit of flex in the uh, master cylinder assembly itself where it's bolted down. And then of course the fluid moves. At the other end, you've got your four brake calipers, one for each wheel. There will be a small amount of mechanical play on the sliders that allow the caliper to open and close. I'm exaggerating here, obviously. Um, and then finally, a small bit of play where the pistons in the caliper push out the brake pads and take up the tiny clearance they have between the discs, which are rotating as you're driving, and the pad faces. Once that play has been taken up, you're just left with foot against fluid, effectively, and fluid doesn't compress, brake fluid this is, doesn't compress, and then the pads themselves squeezing on your brake discs. Once they're hard up against the brake disc, they don't move any further. You're just applying pressure directly relative to your foot and any leverage that may apply based on the pedal length and what have you. And that's another good point actually. The reason Acertec and race cars have pedals at 90 degrees is because it gives you the best mechanical leverage on your brake pedal to allow you to get maximum force when you do need to brake as hard as you need to. But yeah, so that's how race car pedals work. What that means is, once that initial bit of movement has gone, the pedal is absolutely rock hard. Now, street cars are the opposite. The pedals are very soft, and the brakes are often super responsive. Like modern cars, because I've jumped in and out of all sorts of different cars throughout the day when I'm at work, some of them you've barely got to breathe on the brake pedal, and it's like your head's almost banging against the windscreen because the brakes are so sharp. Race car um, brakes and pedals are the opposite. You have to really stomp on that brake pedal to get a lot of braking at the actual wheels of the car. Now this allows for better consistency 
um, and greater muscle memory, and it stops you from over braking as well, which you could do you know, in a car with servo assistance. Another thing about servo assistance is because it is vacuum operated, the vacuum generated by your engine varies based on RPM and load, so you'll get a varying amount of vacuum assistance depending on what load the engine is under and your throttle position. And again, in a race environment, you want your brakes to behave the same every single time you press the pedal. So that's the difference between race car pedals and street car pedals. Now, this is good. if you've never driven a race car, this is gonna feel really unnatural because what they've done is they've simulated, I'm just gonna take out, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, you can. I'm gonna take out the elastomer from the back here just to make this easier to demonstrate. They supply you with three. The black one is the softest one. And that elastomer is there purely to simulate the play that we spoke about a minute ago before the brakes are engaged. Now I've removed that, so there's obviously no resistance there now. Um, you can hear a hard stop. Now that isn't a travel stop like on the other two pedals, that is this hitting the inside of the cylinder. That literally, in fact, I need to wind it in a bit further. Yeah, this is, this is how you adjust that little bit of mechanical play. They say sort of 10 to 20 millimeters in, in most cars is what you would get, but that's adjustable. Um, and once you've hit that, this little collar here literally stops hard against the housing here. The pedal doesn't then ever move any further than that. So that is very little travel. Um, and this brings up like an interesting thought to me because whilst after this point, it just measures pressure at the pedal, you know, like maybe a load cell. I don't actually know what, well, I'm guessing this is some sort of hydraulic pressure sensor, but a load cell, you know, also measures pressure. Um, yeah, this brings up an interesting thought to me, which is they've replicated what happens in real life race car pedals really, really well. You've got your initial travel, taking up your play, you know, in the pedal, um, hydraulic system activates, calipers, pistons push out, brake pads just take up their tiny bit of play, and then your braking begins. Now that's how it works in real life. This is sim racing. So if you've got a first stage where you're taking up play, like you'd have in real life, that shouldn't do any braking in our sims. You would need to calibrate that out, basically, if you want it to be as it is in real life. If you were to leave the pedal in its sort of up position like it is now, and calibrate that as your zero, and the moment you start moving the pedal, the brakes start to apply in the sim, that isn't actually what happens in real life, is it? Once in real life, when you move the pedal that little bit and take up all the play, there's no braking done until those pads move and touch the disc. So we should really, if we want to be accurate and realistic, this little piece of movement here should do nothing as far as braking goes. So that should be a zero. So then the question comes to mind, if that's gonna do nothing, why have it at all? Because this little bit of movement, 10 to 20 mil, one or two centimeters, is just gonna be a delay between when you apply pressure on the brake pedal and when you actually start to brake in the sim. Now in real life, you can't get away from that because there has to be mechanical clearances. The brake pads have to come away from the disc a little bit, otherwise they'd constantly be dragging. But in sim racing, you don't have to have that. So you can either you know, I hope you see where I'm going with this. You can either, you know, have your elastomers in and, and have that little bit of movement there and choose not to calibrate it out, whereby the moment you start moving the pedal, you actually start braking. But that wouldn't be what happens in real life, so it's unrealistic, and these pedals are designed to be realistic. Or you would calibrate this bit of movement out and have it only start braking once this collar hits the back of the chamber there, which is effectively 
your brake pads hitting the brake discs, only have braking start there, and that would be realistic. But then you've got a delay between when you start pressing the pedal and when you start braking that as sim racers, you don't need to have. If, if there was two of you side by side braking at exactly the same point in perfect scientific conditions, the person without the, the delay who doesn't calibrate out that bit of movement is gonna start braking sooner than the person who does calibrate that out. So that's a bit of a weird one. I don't really know, you know, if you're competitive and you wanna win, you don't want to delay when you press the pedal. But then <laughs> why engineer this in at all if we don't need it because we're sim racers and we don't have to have mechanical um, clearances like there is in a real car. So that's interesting. And so then the, the next question that came into my head was, because we get a physical hard stop like that and the pedal then literally doesn't move any further, if we don't want that delay, so let's say we wind that all the way in like that. So now there's no movement. If we don't want any movement on the pedal at all and it just registers pressure, why have we got a hydraulic setup at all? And this isn't just Acertech. This is, you know, just thinking out loud about things that have sprung to mind whilst reviewing these pedals because they've done such a good job of simulating what happens in real life. It's made me think, well, hold on a minute. We don't need a delay on our braking input. And if in, if in real life, once that, that sort of slack has been taken out, the pedal doesn't move anywhere, surely the optimum pedal for sim racing will be one that just doesn't move in the first place and simply registers pressure, because that's what happens. Now I've wound this in here, there is no movement at all, nothing. It just registers pressure. So, you know, you could do, you could do away with the whole hydraulic setup and just have a, a aluminum or steel rod with a pressure sensor on the end, be it a load cell or whatever you want, and it just measures pressure at the brake pedal. I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing, you know, to, to bring up, because they've done a brilliant job here of simulating real life braking in a race car, which is take up your mechanical slack and then rock hard pedal where it doesn't move because it's metal on metal, brake pad against brake disc, well, not quite metal on metal, brake pad isn't metal, but you know what I mean. Um, brake pad and brake disc, you know, the fluid doesn't compress, you've taken up your mechanical slack, all you're doing is applying pressure. Um, so, yeah, just, just some food for thought there. But, uh, but you know, back, back to what they've done here, this is a bespoke hydraulic setup, and, you know, they've done a brilliant job here. What's really interesting is when you have your elastomers in, and you just sort of leave this out a little bit so you've got a reasonable amount of movement, that feels so much like uh, a real brake pedal does, you know, in a in even a street car, once you've pushed it all the way down as far as it will go, and you sort of give it a little squish. It really does feel very realistic. Um, so they've done a brilliant job there. And, you know, as far as, like, uh, the, the pricing of these pedals go, you know, a lot of money and time has gone into research and development of this bespoke hydraulic setup. So unlike other pedal manufacturers where they've got an off-the-shelf set of, set of real-life pedals and just bolted a couple of hall sensors, you know, that were a fiver each and a Leo Bond, the low cell controller on and, and added another £900 to the price. This is all bespoke and custom made and designed for sim racing and to be as realistic as possible. So I think we're definitely getting more of our money's worth with these pedals than we are with some others. And we'll just talk about the price briefly. At the moment, they're on pre-order still. Um, so for the two pedal set, it's 699 in dollars uh, and the clutch is an additional 299. And they said as far as UK pricing goes, it should basically be whatever that works out to in pounds. There shouldn't be, because I mentioned in the first video, obviously we have import duty and VAT, and they said should be basically, you know, dollars to pounds, just a straight translation should be roughly where the price is. So probably like a thousand pounds for all three pedals, which puts them quite reasonably priced for high-end pedals, because you can buy, you know, ones that are 1,200, 1,500, two and a half grand, um, which I think is just ridiculous. And as some of you will know, I think sim racing pedals are one of the things that we pay far too much money for, um, 
for what they actually do and how they're actually constructed. But at least with these ones, a lot of research and development has gone into making this bespoke hydraulic setup. Um, and like I say, they are the nicest pedals I've ever used. Um, and you know, if you're in the market for a new set of pedals and you want a race car brake feel, this is so important here. These, you know, are absolutely brilliant and I can definitely recommend them. If you don't want a race car brake pedal feel though, if you want it to feel like a street car, you know, like your everyday mass production street car, and, when, and we're talking even things like, you know, Lamborghinis and Ferraris, they don't have race car like brake pedals. They are servo assisted because your average Joe driving about the street doesn't need to break their leg every time they want to brake hard, you know, and in an emergency, if a child walks out, you want to be able to just apply braking very quickly and have it stop super fast. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So it's just about what you want, really. Do you want that genuine real life race car feel where, as you see a second ago, the pedal moves until it takes up the play and then stops hard and just measures pressure from that point? Or do you want a streetcar feel, you know, like with the Fnatic V3s or something, which has quite a bit more travel in it? Although the Fnatic V3s, you can actually make pretty hard and you can reduce the movement quite a lot, um, much nearer to a race car feel than a streetcar if you wanted to. So that's, that's just going to be entirely up to you. And that is going to make or break whether these pedals are for you or not, you know, because the, everyone I had that tried these instantly went, What's the matter with that brake pedal car? It feels horrible. It just doesn't move. But everyone I had try these has never driven a real life race car. And the only reason I have felt pedals, you know, without servo assistance is because at work for the last decade, I've fitted quite a few sets of aftermarket pedal boxes where we remove the servo assistance and it's just literally race car feel. Um, but for most people, it feels very unnatural to only move a very small amount and then have no more movement at all. So that's just gonna be down to you as the individual. Now the other thing that is gonna make or break these pedals for people is that they are very noisy. And I'll put a clip up now showing just how noisy the accelerator and the clutch are in use. So you can hear from that clip the noise it makes when these pedals are hitting those hard end stops. They're not dampened in any way, it's metal on metal. And that was in my GT Amiga Titan, which is on carpet. So there's a little bit of dampening going on there. It's literally metal on metal. Now I spoke to uh, Acer Tech about this because I said sim racers who have wives or children, or even if you live in a block of apartments and your rig is on a wall that has a neighboring uh, property, this could be a real problem. If the kids are asleep and you can hear that accelerator or clutch and accelerator banging away, that could potentially wake them up. If your missus is trying to watch her favorite program on the TV with a glass of wine relaxing in the evening and you're in your sim racing room smacking away on the pedals, she's not gonna be happy. So. That may be a problem for some people. Uh, Acertech said to me that people are welcome to DIY a little rubber stop, you know, to put underneath the pedals there. Uh, and the reason they gave me for not having uh, like a rubber end stop themselves is that they didn't want to interfere with the accuracy of the accelerator and the clutch. Now, what they mean by that is when you get to 100% travel, if there's a piece of rubber there, you can push it a little bit further and compress the rubber, or maybe you don't press it quite as hard and the rubber doesn't compress as much. And that you know, translates to movement on the pedal. So what they were, I think what they were trying to say was you may not accurately hit 100% every time. But what was weird about this was, um, my first thought in my head was, well, you just calibrate a small dead zone at the end of the travel, and then you haven't got to worry about it. And then as I was reading down through the manual, which is here, they actually tell you to add in on the throttle a 2% dead zone at the top and a 2% dead zone at the bottom. But not only that, uh, there's a paragraph here that says a top dead zone allows you to modify the point of full activation. This is for the accelerator. 
In the case of the throttle pedal, this will allow you to reach 100% throttle before your throttle pedal reaches full activation and the mechanical pedal stop, which is where you would hear that noise. This preference is individual and generally done by a race engineer before the car goes on track. Race Hub allows you to customize it fully and we strongly encourage you to do it as well, not to lose potential speed and lap times. So they actively encourage you to short calibrate the throttle pedal, which means you could have the biggest rubber end stop in the world, the biggest squishiest rubber end stop on the planet, and it wouldn't make any difference because you just calibrate the pedal short um, and that would eliminate that sort of loud noise we get from the pedal there as it hits the end stop. So I don't really know, you know, I think they should just put some rubber end stops in because they're telling you to put in a dead zone. They're actively encouraging you to short calibrate the throw of the accelerator pedal so you reach 100% braking, 100% uh, braking, 100% acceleration faster. Because you've got to remember, any, any uh, time it takes to move pedals from one position to another is all like a delay. So when it comes to acceleration and braking and the clutch as well, the more time you spend transitioning, the less time um, or the more time you're wasting. So if you want to get to 100% acceleration, the faster you can get there, the better. So rather, you know, instead of having a pedal that travels two foot, you can have a pedal that only moves a little way. Obviously, you can go too extreme and then you haven't got much control, uh, much fidelity. But you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really see any reason why they can't just put some rubber end stops there to stop that noise. Because other than that, the pedals are quiet. There's no other noise. Oh, and I very briefly mentioned Race Hub here when I read out that quote. The software is perfectly nice and easy to use. You can calibrate your dead zones. You can adjust curves for acceleration and, and braking and, and whatever and customize them all how you want. And you can control your RGB LEDs as well. That all works fine. But, um, but you know, what's, what's really important is how these pedals feel and what we can do with them, which is what I've been going through so far. I think... That's probably, oh no, one other thing to mention. This, um, some of you may have noticed that this hydraulic setup wobbles left to right quite freely. That isn't a fault, that is intentional. And do I still have the email up where they told me what that was for? Let's have a quick look. Uh, no, I don't, but basically, oh no, here it is, yeah. So I asked about this, I said, you know, why is that play intentional or, or is, you know, is there a fault? Is there something missing? Am I missing a bush? And what they said was, um, to, to their understanding, is to do with the inherent flex that isn't any material. Essentially, it would cause excessive wear and tear on the cylinder if it was completely fixated rather than being given the ability to move a little. So that is intentional and it's to stop unnecessary wear and tear. Because I, I sort of wobbled it around and went, oh, what's going on here? Is there a bush missing or, or a bearing or something? But it's not. It's how it's supposed to be. So I think that's probably the end of my review. We've covered all the adjustments, which are all highlighted in this sort of burnt orange color. Um, everything from pedal angle to end stops. We spoke about the end stop noise it's created. Um, I spoke about the accelerator pedal, how you can adjust the preload, how smooth it is in operation. Spoke about the clutch and how that feels very much like a heavy duty race clutch. Again, how you can adjust the preload, the angle and the end stop. And we spoke about the brake pedal and how there is just a very small amount of movement to simulate mechanical clearances and play in a real life race car. And then how it goes completely rock solid uh, and how that brings to my mind should we calibrate that free play out and have a slight delay as we press our brake pedal? Do we need that at all? Because this isn't real life. And as sim racers, we can have the brake pedal activate as soon as we start to move it. And then being as it stops hard and we no longer get any movement, do we need the hydraulic setup at all? Or can we just have a pressure sensor and a rock hard pedal? Because that is what you've got once this reaches its stop. A rock hard pedal, nothing moves, and it's just measuring the pressure. I'll leave those thoughts with you guys. Any comments, any questions, stick them in the comments. Um, Acer Tech themselves seem like uh, a great bunch 
uh, guys, and I'm really excited about what else they're going to be bringing to the sim racing community um, as time goes on. Uh, these are still pre-order right now for the prices I mentioned earlier. There will be links in the description. They're not affiliated anyway, but they'll be there for you just to go through and should you want them, you can get hold of them. But yes, that's my review of the Acer Tech Invicta pedals. Thank you very much for watching and as always, take it easy.